MovieWeb.com. Well, I was going to ask you, how many times did Jason make you watch this Killer Baboon movie? Killer Baboon, oh my god. What is that movie called? Shockma. Shockma. He was just yeah. telling me about it. It sounds uh, nuts. I got Shockma, <laughs> check you have to check out. I haven't seen it at all. I haven't seen Shockma, but I hear that it's radical. Well, working in Cinephile, were you able to sort of broaden your erotica horizons or other film genres for um, that matter? Well, I didn't work in Cinephile, but... We're not working the there, but I meant... <laughs> oh, I'm shit sorry. in there. Yeah. I was like, I never worked there. I should have. But um, the guys uh, who were... Well, actually, it's funny because the guys who are the dudes in the movie, actually, I made them work in Cinephile for free, like free labor for three weeks. <laughs> so that was really good. Oh, that was pretty good for them, too. They just went in there and, like, they, rented out videos? I think they were a wee bit bored, um, because I think the reason you work in a, like, in Cinephile, in a job, is to get paid. And they weren't getting paid, but they were, like, doing research, so I don't know how... You have to ask them, like, how bored they were, but, um, they weren't getting paid, so I kind of feel bad about that now. Now, I, in retrospect, <laughs> I'm like, man, that's bad, but it was good for the for the video store because they had like guys to work there for free and I really wanted them to have the sense of you know the day to day of that store and what it's like to actually be there for a long time like hours on end you know were they doing other work at that time or were they just simply not getting paid I mean, they for were three just, weeks yeah, doing not nothing? getting paid for three weeks like they had committed to do to doing good dick and they just said right we're not going to get paid and sucks for us but they did it because they liked the movie they liked the script i don't know <laughs> <laughs> with this story i was wa i watched the film last night and i like the fact that it's kind of ambiguous yeah. but the thing that kind of was weird to me i guess just seeing as many movies as i do is the fact that you didn't name your ma two main characters yes no why you didn't was notice the... that till the end though right no i didn't notice that until i saw the in credits come up and there yeah. was no names well i read this book when i was growing up um called rebecca where the um, one of the main characters doesn't have a name and you don't really know that they don't have a name until you kind of look back and realize oh my god I finished the novel and it's and she never is mentioned her name is never mentioned um, and it's kind of haunting and interesting and uh, actually made me feel closer to that character I felt like very um, endeared to her and so the whole idea of not giving them names was like you get to know them so well in the movie um, throughout the hour and a half that you're with them that I was like thinking it would be really a great thing to just not even name them. Um, because the whole the movie is dealing with intimacy and what that means and sometimes we're very close to them on their faces and sometimes we're very far away from them um, like around a corner or like outside. Um, and when I, sh when I was working with Jason in rehearsal and with the guys in rehearsal we did everything um, very, cl we kept very close closely to the script so that we were really shooting a play in essence um we had we were so well rehearsed that we could have like put on the good dick show <laughs> um i don't know who would have come to see it but it would have been a hell of a night um <laughs> but um yeah so we were really like going for um that whole kind of like voyeuristic feel and so the the no names kind of um, played into that for me in a way. I don't think that I would ever do it again. It was really just specifically for this movie with these characters. Um, and because of the way that they find each other, it's just kind of like an elegant um, addition to the, to the story. Now, what was interesting to me is uh, I was watching this film with my girlfriend and she said that... That's awesome. <laughs> she said that if she knew this guy was out peeking in her window... Watching her while she's yeah. masturbating, yeah. and then she found out about it later, which I don't yeah. think she does find out. But it, yeah, no, she was like, "If I knew somebody was doing that, I'd be totally yeah. creeped out, and probably yeah. no matter how good looking they were, if they sure. were Jason Ritter or not, sure. I would not never talk to them." And sure. I'm wondering what your thought is on that outside yeah. of the character. Well, you know, I think that he is in love with her, and so he um, he's so in love with her that he really needs to do that and it's not really seedy and he's not like um, a stalker in the traditional sense like he doesn't have an ulterior motive he's just in love with her and then it's um, it's kind of like romantic like the way that he lies in the movie a couple of times I find romantic like he's not really lying he's kind of white lying and it's like the thread that 
brings us um, through the story. Um, I think that he's a very, I think that he's a really kind of a strong character, and I think that the that this whole idea that like he's a hero, you know, he's the hero of the story. He's like, um, ro you know, he's like the romantic god. He's like that um, that mythological character Eros. Do you know about that guy? Mm -hmm. He's like just all loving, like all encompassing, like all. Um, he was like a very kind character, and so I think when he's looking through the window, he's actually gazing at her in a kind way. Um, and so I find that like really intriguing, and I think that um, it's a, it's kind of like a beautiful moment in the movie, and he kind of only does it like a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's I, not that weird. I had seen the trailer before I saw the movie, obviously, because we ran like. The, oh, you did see the trailer. Well, we have well, our site ran like an exclusive Green yeah, Band trailer right. for it. Yeah. And I watched it when it was going up, and I thought, "Wow, this woman is." crazy but then when I saw the movie it was totally the I had like the opposite feelings towards the yeah. characters and I was like yeah. I understand where right. she's coming from I'm just kind of wondering did yeah. you have anything to do with putting the trailer together and I how did. it like varied the two stories of the trailer varied from yeah. the film the trailer is kind of from um, the, the guy's point of view yeah. and the movie is from both of their points of view so that's probably what you were feeling was like um, you it was difficult to in the, the whole reason for making the movie was to illustrate her problems um, and to to illustrate their problems together and how they heal one another like through their um, journey together and so I think that in a trailer is problematic when you're dealing with a movie that's like so deep mm -hmm. um, and it deals with so many themes it's really difficult in two minutes to to explore all of those, like really the whole movie itself is, is for that, you know. So a trailer is actually like a hard thing to do, we realized. It's difficult to make one um, and to make a good one. You know, like I think a lot of people will just make one, but like making a good trailer that's actually compelling is really tough. Um, and because we, um, the production company Morning Night and the other production company that was part of the movie Present Pictures, the, the two production companies are self-distributing the film, so mm -hmm. um, once the film went to Sundance and the film got a, a release in the UK, it's on 40 screens in the UK um, in October with a distribution company, because we because we sort of secured that deal, the four of us, um, Morning Night and Present Pictures, there's four producers, we realised that we could self-distribute it here in the US and we thought like, you know, why not? And so um, we had to do our own trailer. So, well, I thought it was cool because it does come from a different perspective, I guess. It's like a little yeah. mini-movie before you see the real movie. Yeah, I think it's hard. I think it's really like a difficult... I find it like really difficult, challenging, because to put like, um, you know, like I say, like an hour and a half of stuff into, ha into two minutes, it's like what... You have to have like a story structure in the trailer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's like he has, something has to happen in the trailer. You can't just like <laughs> show... You can't just like play music, you know? <laughs> So, I think we did an okay job. I think that it's it's going to be great to do more things down the line, because um, so much of what the good dick is is um, a learning experience, you know. And you just like learn on every movie that you do. I think so. This one was like a lot of learning for me. Okay, well, I have one more question. I just want to ask about the casting of Tom Arnold. Yeah. How did you decide to cast him in this film, and why did you think he was good for the father? Um. Well. Funnily enough, I feel like Tom and I in the movie really look like each other. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we look like each other in real life, but I think in the film, when you watch that scene, it's very almost bizarre how we kind of look like one another. And so that was appealing to me. It was appealing to me that he read the script and he liked it and he got it and he was interested in exploring what we're exploring, which is like the... The questions that we're basically asking with the film are like, what is sexy? Like, what does that actually mean? What does good dick mean? Um, is it something that is the same for everyone? Is it different for everyone? Um, because in order to sort of illuminate intimacy, you have to kind of um, ask questions that are interesting. Like, it's not the modern world is so saturated with um, movies that are not um, 
really intimate that are not really showing intimacy. Like intimacy is about togetherness. Like you actually have to be with someone else. You can't just watch a porn or like watch an erotica or like be <laughs> alone, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, those themes are like interesting questions and I feel like the film brings them up and also um, shows shows a little bit of what it's like to survive sexual abuse and to live a healthy life afterwards if it's you know if that's possible if that's even possible it turns out for this character that it is um, but that's not necessarily to say that it's possible for everyone but I think that um, there's the possibility with the movie when you hear the title and you hear that she watches erotica or some people just say like oh it's it's good dick and she watches porn and she's like <laughs> obsessed with porn people are like oh it's like so dark like what is this movie it's a dark movie and the reality of the movie is there's no nudity it's very sweet um it could, like it really couldn't be sweeter i think um and it's funny because it's I, I think it's like a very positive movie it's cathartic you know like mm -hmm. i think you feel good after you've watched it um, because it brings up all these things, it asks all these questions about like modern sex and what does it really mean, you know. So, um, long, long answer to your question, which was about Tom Arnold. <laughs> but I think that Tom got that, you know, and he brought something to the role that was really interesting, which is a kind of like a kind of sadness that I think is really obvious in his face in that scene and. Um, I think we did a really good job illustrating the the problems that his character had and like the blocks his character had, like he's just not po able to be in reality. Um, and so that's something that Tom, uh, you know, just really was good at doing. He was really, really like perfect, he was like, was, like perfectly cast. And I thought Charles Durning was really well cast too. <laughs> <laughs>